So my name is Nancy and I'm going to get started. Uh, the first thing that you're going to need are three brushes. Hopefully you have three brushes, a large, a medium, and small, and paints. We have red, yellow, blue, black, and white. I have a container of water to wash my brushes. I have napkins. I have my beverage, that's important. And I have my canvas. This is a 16 by 20 pre-primed canvas, um, but you don't have to have that. You can paint on whatever you have. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my brush, my large brush in water, and I'm gonna cover my entire canvas with water. It doesn't need to be dripping or anything. The reason I'm doing this is Denver has a very dry climate. And uh, so the canvas dries out really quickly. And so I want to make sure that it's moist enough that my paint won't dry out too quickly. So just make sure you, you get, get the whole thing covered in just plain old water. And I'll give you just a second to do that. Okay, wonderful. So, after I get my water in there, oh, by the way, Acrylic paint dries very quickly. So what you'll need to do is um, make sure that the paint isn't on your brush for long. Once you do a step, then put your brush in your water, give it a really good swish, and then dab it off on your napkin. The napkin isn't for what washing the brushes, it's just for dabbing to make sure that it's clean. But uh, do wash it a lot in your water in between steps, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is, I, I'm gonna take my big brush and on one side of the plate, uh, pardon me, on one side of the brush, I'm gonna put some white paint, like that. And on the other side, I'm gonna put blue paint. So I have blue on one side, I have white on the other. The reason I'm doing it that way, it's a really easy kind of cheating way to put my streaks in my sky. Um, so, I like that way. So I'm just going to come up here. I'm going to streak back and forth. Now the sample painting might have a slightly different shade of blue and that's okay. Acrylic paints come in lots of different shades of blue, lots and lots. Uh, they, you know, there's ultramarine blue and phthalo blue and cobalt blue and all different kinds. We're using ultramarine blue. So if yours looks a little bit different, that's okay. It's still gonna be great if your blue isn't exactly like the original. We use the basic primary colors because we wanna teach you how to mix colors. And we try to approximate the colors that we see in the paintings we're copying, but it's not gonna be exactly the same every time. And that's okay. Now what I want is I want my sky to have streaks in it. So you'll see that there are streaks in the sky. The white parts represent the clouds, the thin clouds that are in the sky. So I definitely wanna make sure that I keep those streaks. I don't wanna over blend. I don't want to blend them right out. I want the white to be white and the blue to be blue. So lots of streaks in my sky. And then I'm not going to clean my brush because I'm going to come down here and I'm going to do the same thing down here. I'm going to leave the middle of the painting so I can make it pink. But I'm going to do the same thing down here. The only difference is I'm going to, there's a little bit of white. I'm going to put in mostly blue from here down because that's my water. 
and I'll come in last and I'll put pink and white in the middle. But for now, until this point, I'm gonna make it mostly blue with some white streaks. Up here, it's mostly white with blue streaks. From here down, I'm gonna do mostly blue with white streaks. So what that means is for every time I have white on my brush, I'm gonna to have to do it twice as much in the blue. This blue is a little purpley, which is gonna make a very pretty painting actually. And I'm going all the way from one side, all the way to the other. All the way from one side, all the way to the other. Not little choppy strokes, but nice and smooth, like water lines. You can even add a drop of water or two as you paint, but make sure not too much or you'll get drips like I just did. So, and in this water, I definitely want it to have streaks. Don't blend it all the way. We don't want just light blue. We want it to have streaks. And if at any time you have a comment or you want to ask a question, just unmute yourself and ask. That would be great. It's just easier if I um, have you on mute while I'm teaching so that I don't hear the you know, if your phone rings or someone knocks on the door. and I am record, like I said, I am recording this for YouTube. We have lots of uh, customers that like to go on YouTube and check out our classes after the fact and paint along. And you're welcome to do that as well. So lots of streaks. While I'm doing those streaks, I'm also gonna paint the sides of my canvas, the edges. And the reason for that is that if I paint the sides and the top and the bottom as I go, then I don't have to buy a frame. I'll save lots of money. I can just hang it on the wall because it'll look like the painting just wraps right around the whole canvas. That's a good way to save some money. I like to, once I get my water on and my sky streaks on, I like to step back about 10 feet away or however many feet away you can in your space and look at it from a distance and make sure it's, it's streaky enough but not stripey. There's a difference between streaky and stripey. We don't want stripes like a shirt, but we do want streaks, streaks of color. Be like your hair. If you're putting highlights in your hair, you don't want stripes, you just want streaks. And if you put on too much blue, you can always come back in and put in a white streak. see something that you aren't crazy about in your sky when you step back, you can always go back and fix it because you're using the same colors on your brush. I am holding my brush so that I want to try to get the flat side, paint with the flat side, not the broad side. So if you imagine it like a knife sitting on the table, you could paint with the broad side of it or the flat side. And I wanna to try to paint with the flat side. I hope that makes sense. The reason for that is it gives me finer lines. 
Let me know if that doesn't make sense and I'd be happy to explain it again in a different way. I have to make sure to remember that my sky needs to be lighter than the water, of course. Same colors and streaky, but lighter. So I know it's a little bit of a chore to get your paint set up and um, to sit down to paint. And I just want to say cheers to you and whatever brought you here to paint with me today. And I hope you can just relax now. Cheers to you, Nancy. Thank you. We did get our beverage set up also. <laughs> Good. Um, I, I just came back from the Western Slope and picked up some wine in Palisade. But oh, we're nice. having the White Zinfandel from St. Catherine's Nice. Um, Cellars. In that was on my list to do this summer, to go to the wineries on the Western Slope. And, you know, the pandemic had other plans. Yeah, yeah. There's a uh, there's a lot of them over there. Nice. Palisades got a bunch of them kind of grouped together, close close proximity. Nice. And you know what I love about Colorado wines? Someone told me that it they don't use very much in the way of pesticides because it's so dry here; it doesn't need it. Which I just love that. Oh yeah, that's very good. I didn't know that. Mine's as good as it's gonna get. So, <laughs> my water and my and my sky. Well, I was actually drinking sangria, but it didn't have enough wine in it for me, so I threw some more in there. Oh. That's mine. <laughs> I like I like Joanne's much better. I have to do it this way. Oh, no, I don't think you can do that. Oh. Huh, it's not like FaceTime. Okay. When you, have, when you have your water done in your sky and you're pretty happy with it, and just know that we're never 100% happy. If you're 80% happy with it, leave it alone. Because you, uh, from my experience, you never really get to 100. So I'm going to leave that alone. And I'm going to do the same thing with white and red. I'm going to put white on one side of my brush and red on the other. And then I'm going to make this pink by going back and forth a lot. There's a lot of red, but I'm going to have to go back and forth a lot with some white to get this pink sunset. And I can add a little drop or two of water to it to make it spread a little easier. As you go, your paint's going to start to dry out and you're going to need to add a little water. Okay, so we're putting white and white and red mm -hmm. oh, okay. yep. and make sure that your um that your brush is really clean before you do this clean it my really white, well my white paint has a little bit of blue in it so it's going to be kind of purple yeah that's okay here's the thing no one's ever going to see the original so you <laughs> just tell them, this looks exactly like the sunset i saw the other day <laughs> no one will even know what you're painting I'll just think you're a genius. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. So what are you, are, are you in town from out of town? Uh, no, we live here in Denver, but okay. we uh, just wanted to get away. So we're nice. down at the Kimpton Hotel. Nice, good for you. Yeah. You're doing a, a fancy staycation. Yes. Exactly. Nice. 
I need to do one of those with my husband. We're kind of getting a little crazy right now. Well, you guys are so busy with the this company, with this business. I can yeah. imagine it's hard to do. Well, it's interesting you say that because, you know, we've been a lot busier, um, you know, with more classes and more people. But my, my employees are off right now. Um, some of them start back on Monday. Um, mm. But, you know, because the unemployment benefits were good. Uh, yeah. We, we waited as long as we could. Yeah. And, um, well, isn't that coming to an end, the extra benefit? Yeah, it did this yesterday. Yep, exactly. So I've got a couple coming back for more hours. Um, they just, you know, did a class or two last month, but I understand. I know people want their benefits, and I didn't really have business for them anyway, so... But it'll feel good to have, have some people back in the studio with me and things to get back to normal a bit. We still don't have very many customers, but you know, in this, we are doing the Zoom thing, which is really fun for me. Um, but we're just trying to build that up. Yeah. Yeah, this is really neat. And uh, my daughter that you met yesterday um, is, is the artist of the family. She's Really, she knows so much about paints and all this stuff. And so I want to do one with her. And my oldest daughter is wanting to take it up. So um, I thought we'd do a Zoom with, with the two of them. Nice. Really enjoy that. I just want to tell you, when you do your sky, you can uh, not, like, not pick up any more paint as your pink and white, red and white run out. And you can just add a drop or two of water and just use what's left on your brush to blend up in the sky. This one is not blended well, but if you blend up, it's gonna look a little more realistic. You know, the pink just kind of disappears into the blue and that's just gonna add a little bit more realism into your painting rather than having blocks of pink and blocks of blue. I hope that makes sense. And I didn't pick up any more paint on my brush to do that. I'm just letting the pink just kind of run out on its own. And that makes a more realistic looking sun, sunset, I think. What do you think? So I was listening to what you were saying about your daughter and my experience here at the studio after owning the studio for five years is that the more someone paints, the better they get. The more they practice art, the better they get. And um, it's a discipline that anyone can get good at. I'm, I'm not a big believer in talent, but I am a big believer in discipline and um, determination. And I, I think all of you could be amazing artists in your family. Um, obviously, your daughter um, has the aptitude for it that she picked up from you. And, and um, so I, I think you can all just be great artists. <laughs> yeah, that's, she definitely aspires to my oldest daughter um, wants to take it up. Uh, but the youngest daughter that's into the art, uh, she goes to um, Kunzmiller Arts Academy. Nice. And, and so, but I don't know if you've heard of it, it's in Denver, um, the Denver Public Schools, but it's, um, right. uh, her thing is she's like torn between, she's trying to focus on both. You know, she's a dancer. And wow. so focuses on, you know, the performing arts and then the visual arts. Wow. A teacher here who was a jazz musician, and she was a painter, and I think I think her talents complemented each other really nicely. Oh, I'll have to tell Isabella that. If you are having any trouble getting fine lines with that big brush, you can always use your small brush too to go in and put in 
you know, little lines. Whatever is easiest for you. Okay. Wow, yours is so pretty. Mine looks like all brush strokes. <laughs> Mine doesn't have hair on the head. So. But, Just remember, pull all the way across from side to side using the flat part of your knife. So here's the broad, not knife, I keep saying knife, I mean brush. Here's the broad side of my brush, and here's the flat side of my brush. So if I use the flat side, I get the skinnier lines. It's like it, it's like it's laying on the table the way it would normally lay on the table. That's mm -hmm. how how I want to hold it when I'm painting to get those skinny lines. So I have a stage here where my easels are and where my camera setup is, but the computer's behind the bar. So. Mm -hmm. Well, I can't wait to come and do this in person Pardon? with you. I can't wait till we can come and do this in person with you. Me too. So much better. <laughs> but this is a very good option. I'm glad you have it. Thanks. I'm glad too. I enjoy it. Okay, so we're going to let this dry. If there's any part that you're not happy with, you can just let it dry. And that won't stop us from moving on to the next part, okay? Okay. So I'm going to pick up my baby brush, make sure it's clean, and I'm going to put some white on my baby brush. Okay. Is that then the... Gonna, yep, it's the smallest one. Okay. Yeah, because this one has a smaller brush, but it's a longer... It's, you know what I mean? Like yeah. That. You want the shortest yeah. one? It's okay, as long as it's got... Whatever is the skinniest on top, that's what we're going with. Okay, got it. So I'm just gonna go in at the horizon line and about a hand's width closed from the left side. I'm gonna put in a line about two inches long, maybe an inch and a half long, like that. Okay. And then I'm gonna come up and make a half a circle. And that's okay. gonna be my setting light. In okay. One. Don't blend you. Don't you don't want us to blend it yet? Just leave it like that. Oh, you are blending it. I'm, okay. I'm just going to pull in the color from the sides, and that's my setting sun. Okay. But then from that, I'm not going to pick up any more paint. But from the side, I'm just going to go around, and I'm going to softly flick out sun rays close to each other, as if it's like I'm putting mascara on eyelashes. Okay. Now, I don't know if both of you have done that before, but... <laughs> um, I have three daughters, and I've witnessed it a million times. Never <laughs> done it. Awesome. Awesome. I don't make any assumptions about anything. <laughs> we are very open-minded here. Does it need to be to the left? Can we put it in more in the center, or do you want it on the left? You can put it wherever you want. Here's the thing, though, about any landscape paintings that you do. They're always going to be a little more interesting if things are off-center. Right. And the reason for that is nature is never, uh, you know, perfect. Um, mm -hmm. And if it looks perfect, it starts to look like Disney World. Right. I have this, uh, this what I think is like a cool wave. Right here on the right there on the left. Nice. Yours opposite. You could do your sunset here oh, and your oh, balloons there. I guess I will. But now you are. <laughs> as long as it's off center, it doesn't really matter. Okay. Yeah, I like your little wave there. Um, and maybe I should do the same because I have this odd blend right here. See, I think I should take. But also, that's where your landscape is going to be here. Mountain's going to come down there. Yeah. Okay, so how long is that line? Two inches? Yeah. And how tall? As tall as you want it, I think.
So you said don't use any more paint, just use the white and kind of the colors around it? I just used the white to make the outline of that half circle, but then I didn't reload my brush. I just scratched in from what was already there on those lines because I want it to be light. I don't want it to look like a white light bulb, like solid. I want it to look kind of sketchy and light. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. and, and then I pulled out the rays from, from the paint inside. In other words, I'm just going really light on the paint. I don't want it to look like a kindergarten sun. I want it to look a little, a little more natural by not putting on too much paint. You should tell her what you do, Joy. You a kindergarten teacher? <laughs> yeah. Yay, I love that. Thank you for being a teacher. <laughs> yeah, thanks for saying that. You have the hardest job ever. I, I was in early childhood for 11 years. Oh, yeah? It's hard. It is really yep. hard. I know. It's fun. It's fun, though. Yeah. But it's hard. Teachers make yeah. the world go round. I, I really believe that. Yeah, mine's <laughs> my son looks like, um, I don't know, maybe a porcupine? Um, I was going to say that exactly. <laughs> good. Good. As long as it doesn't have the head and legs, that's really good. <laughs> if it's a porcupine back, that's perfect. All right, then what I'm going to do is, I didn't clean my, the white paint off my brush, what was left, I'll just use it. And I'm going to go on the side of my yellow and just... Just pick up a little bit of yellow. I don't need much. And then I'm just letting that white and the yellow be friends on my brush. And I'm just gonna come in and put some lines coming out of those rays in the sunset. But notice how they're horizontal. They're not, they're not coming out like more spikes on a porcupine. Mm -hmm. These are just, it's the reflection of a cloud of little clouds around the sun and they pick up that sunlight and they just reflect that color. And I'm putting them more or less generally in the shape of the sun coming out, but not, not perfectly. And you can add a little bit of, of white to it too to mix it together a little more. If, pardon me, a little bit of water if, it's, if that looks too thick for you, you, you can decide. We've had such beautiful sunsets. I was just going to say, we've had such beautiful sunsets this summer. And one thing that I, I love to look at them and look at the orders of the, the colors that are in the sunset. And usually the sun is white where it's setting. And then as you come out from it, the clouds start to get yellow. And then as you come out from that, they start to get orange. And then they're pink and then red and then purple and then blue. And there's always this really predictable pattern, even though it's like, even though the shapes are random, the, the sure. color is predictable. And I'm not, I'm not using much paint. I'm probably overdoing it right now because I tend to overdo things. But I'm not using much paint. It's very light and a very light touch. And I think the key is don't make it too orderly. And if it starts to look too orderly, you can put a little water on your brush and just kind of pull them out a bit. We just don't want it to look like a Disney World sign. Like a what sign? Mm -hmm. like, oh, yeah. like Disney World. You know, there's yeah. nothing wrong with Disney World, but we want it to look more natural than that. How much more? There was some movie with Jim Carrey in it about 20 years ago where everything was really fake because he was in a, in a set. He was living in a set. Do you mm -hmm. remember that movie? Yeah, yeah. I want to go back and see it. <laughs> it was a long time ago. But we don't want it to look like a movie set. We want it to look a little more natural. What That's why I'm spreading that out. And you can spread the yellow over the sun a little bit too, if you want. It does not look good. I need to be, I'm not sure what's going on here. 
just remember when it comes to sun sunsets, perfection is the enemy of art. So if yours is, looks different than mine, that's great. Let me tell you a little quick story. Um, I'm certified to teach Bob Ross oil painting classes. Obviously, this is acrylic. It's not a oil paint. It's not Bob Ross. But the fun thing is I get to go down to Florida once a year when there's not a pandemic and paint at the Bob Ross studio. Oh, and nice. Yeah, it's really nice. And so sometimes when I'm down there, I get to see three paintings that he did that are the same composition. And when he paints the painted the same thing more than once, they didn't look the same. So that's reassuring to me that when I copy someone else's work, like I'm doing now, you know, my blue's a little different, my sunset's a little different, but who cares, you know? It's even Bob Ross didn't paint exactly the same thing twice, even when he tried. And your personality is going to come out of your painting, and each one of you is going to have a different looking painting than I have, and mine's going to look different than the original. And that's not a bad thing, that's a great thing. Yes, that is. So art is the heart yep. of diversity. Exactly. Okay, you're doing fantastic. So I'm gonna take my medium brush. Hopefully it's clean. If it's not, please clean it. And I'm gonna mix it with one scoop of black. So a little bit of white and a little bit of black, but more white than black. So a small scoop of black and a big scoop of white. And what I'm going for is a charcoal color. And if your paint is getting thick, if it's more like vanilla pudding, than motor oil, then you can add a little bit of water as you go. Every time we uh, touch the paint, just add a little bit of fresh water to it. You know, regular water. It's okay if it's got a little color in it. All right, so this is an easy rock formation. There's nothing difficult about it. I'm gonna start at about an inch and a half above the water line, and I'm gonna make a bump. And then I'm going to make a big bump. And then I'm going to below that make, oh, that's a really big one, a smaller bump. And mine's a little bigger. I always make things bigger. It's kind of my style. But so my rock's bigger than the original, but I'm okay. I, I've learned to forgive myself when I do things that I didn't intend to. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fill in this rock formation with more of that gray. Now, if your paint is not, um, if it's not mixed, if it's marbly, that's even better because rocks are naturally marbly looking in color and they have edges and ridges. And so if you've got some, if you didn't mix in your paint really well, like I didn't, that's even better. It just gives some texture to your rock. Now what I am gonna do though is I want the top of the rock, it didn't do it in that painting, but I'm gonna do it in this one. I'm gonna make the bottom of the, each of those bulges of rocks a little bit darker because I just wanted to show that that's the bottom and the sun isn't as bright down there. But you don't have to do that. I'm just being a little bit fussy. And you could paint any ridges you want in your, in your rock. Or you could ridges or crisscrosses. But the more texture you have in your rock, actually, that's better. That's a good thing. And what I mean by texture is the paint's not all the same color. It's Choppy, choppy strokes. We made smooth strokes for the water. We made smooth strokes for the clouds in the sky, but now we want choppy for the rocks. Choppy, bumpy, short, little strokes. And not mixed in, in colors that aren't mixed in too well. And that's gonna tell your viewer, oh, that's a rock.
So I'm going to um, give you a minute to do your rocks. So hopefully you got your rocks on there and um, remember perfection is the enemy of art and rocks shouldn't be perfect. They just shouldn't be. Okay, I'm going to get a couple more minutes on the rocks. Sure, no problem. My One thing I'm gonna, it's okay. One thing I am going to do is I'm going to put a, some little water lines around the rocks at the bottom and that just shows you know, maybe some water's lapping up uh, near the base of that rock. And it's just some lines just coming away from the rock, horizontal, flat. And as long as I have that medium brush with a little bit of white paint on it, if there's any more white lines I want to put in, I can do that now to show any water movement. Just make sure if you do that, you pull them straight across. My rock is very dark. That's okay. You can always go over it with lighter if you want, or you can leave it dark. The focal point of this painting is the are the balloons. And once we get the balloons on there, nothing else is really going to matter. I'll just give you another minute to think through that. Mm -hmm. It does like round because it's like the water would be like lapping up against your. Okay. So I heard you talking about water lapping. As an alternative, you could use that white paint and kind of rock it, like start flat and rock it up against the, the rock. The only reason I didn't do that before is that it's real easy to get it to look fake. And so if you do it, you gotta be careful and it, it's uh, just a little tricky. As long as it doesn't look like a shepherd's hook or anything. Yeah. And then we could spend all day making that perfect, you know. Right. And then if we didn't like it, well, we'd be fixing it. So anyway, you're, you're welcome to do that. I just want to caution you that it, it's not as easy as it looks. It's not. The water lines are kind of hard. <laughs> but like you said, we can always go back and, and yeah. fix it later. So. You bet. And we want to kind of keep you on track too, especially since okay. we have to start. We're fine. We're absolutely fine. I can't get over the difference in the two blues. This is a phthalo blue and this is an ultramarine blue. Ultramarine blue mixes better with red and that's why I chose it for the kits um, to make purple. The phthalo blue doesn't mix well with red to make purples, but it is interesting to see them side by side and how different they really are. Yeah. 
I like the colors. I think they're they're very nice. Good. I think they work well. Thanks. So what is your background? Did you go to art school somewhere? <laughs> no, I started to paint when I was 50. 5 -0. I'm 57. Um, no, you're not. I just, really, I just waited till my kids were out of the house. Wow. When I met you, I thought you were all of 30. But, you know, we had oh, masks wow. on the car, so. I, well, you guys get a free drink when you come in. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> <All right. Yeah. laughs> you know, these face masks are great because they hide all kinds of things. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you can be mad but not uh, piss anyone else off. Or, <laughs> or you can be happy and no one else will know. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny when, when people come into the studio and we tell them to smile for the picture and they're wearing masks, it doesn't really make any sense. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. So I have a question. Are you using that little plastic container in your kit for, uh, for your paint, like to hold your paints right now? No, we're using it for water. The reason I asked is that it could be very useful to use that as a template when we put in the balloons. Oh, oh, oh I see. How about the lids? Maybe the lids? Or is that too big? Um, they didn't have lids, did they? They didn't have or a lid. lid. No. No. Well, we could pour these into cups here in the room. You, you could use whatever you have, you have handy. It is kind of easy to start with a circle though, and then we can change it up to the shape of the balloons. Uh, but making a circle first is really nice and easy. I think this I'm gonna go get one of those. Up, I'm gonna go right? get one of those containers. This, this should wash right off of glass, right? Do I have one of these also? Oh, yeah, oh, that's for us. So, so we're going to use two different circles of whatever you have laying around uh, to make the initial circle around the balloon. And that's just really going to help us speed things up a bit on the balloons. We can freehand circles, but it's hard. So I'm just going to use a container. And you should have one in your kit like this. And for those people watching on YouTube the next uh, after we post this, this is pretty much just um, a container from that you'd buy olives in at the grocery store in the deli or a little deli. It's basically a deli container. It's exactly what it is. It's a deli container. And if you just make a white circle around your deli container, that's going to be a really easy place to start. Okay. Looks good. And is it perfect? No, nothing ever is. That's fine. So that's the, Larger balloon, mm -hmm. right? That's the larger balloon. I'm putting it on the right side. And I didn't make mine perfectly round and perfectly smooth, but who cares? So, so the bottom <laughs> arc of the circle should be about where the horizon line is, there are where the sky and the and the um, pink. I'm a little confused. The bottom arc. The bottom arc of the circle. I, I put arc. it about. I started about three fingers from the top. Sorry, okay. I should, and about three fingers from the side, from the right uh, side. Okay, perfect. Thank you. But but if you have it four fingers and you know it doesn't really matter. Whatever you have, like I said, no one's ever going to see the original. They're just going to see yours and go, wow, you're a genius. Look at that. <laughs> you just don't work, but we 
It'll wash off of this. All right. And then for the smaller balloon, use whatever you have laying around. I happen to have a jar lid, so mine's going to be a little bigger than the original. Surprise, surprise. That's what I always do. But whatever you have laying around that's about that size, uh, it could be the top of a milk jug, and then it would be smaller, and that would just be farther away. But whatever is convenient you have laying around, you could use that. So maybe you have a cup, um, or maybe... Uh, I'm trying to think what else you might have. Bottom of a water bottle, that would work well. Or here's another way. You could start in the center. You could just put a dot, pretend the circle is not there, just put a dot, and then circle out. That's an easy way to make a circle. And then just do it slowly and circle out carefully. And you can make a very convincing circle that way without a template. Okay, so this is the medium brush. So the smaller one should be farther I'm away. Using my, thanks for asking. I'm using the small brush because I'm, these outlines are like writing with a pencil, right? So uh -huh. I'm using the small brush, the detail brush. Right, but they're just right next to each other. They're not actually farther, higher up. So this anything. one, in the original painting, this one is quite a bit smaller than this one. And so it's farther away, but since I, just had this circle laying around and I was being lazy. This one's going to be bigger, but yours could be farther away and smaller, or it could be, you know, I would just avoid two the exact same size. Okay. You want one to look like it's following the other or farther away. Got it. Should we color it in or anything or just leave the two circles? Yeah, so um, I was just showing you how to make a, you know, if you needed to make a circle without a template for the second one, just to start in the center and then circle out slowly. Uh, but we're going to fill them in with white anyway. So this small, small one I did with my small brush, but the bigger one, it's a much bigger area. So I'm going to use my bigger brush. I'm going to use my medium brush and uh, fill it in. Whatever brush you think is right for the task. It's just that the flat brushes are a little harder to go around curves with than those pointier ones, the round brushes. So round brushes are called that because when you look at it head on, the dot looks, the top looks round. And then a flat brush looks flatter when you look at it head on. So a flat brush is just harder to make a circle with. Does that make any sense? Yeah. Because you have to angle your hand when you're doing it to get a nice line with a flat brush. My, my inside, uh, the insides of my circles are looking kind of spiraly. So I'm trying I, to. Okay. This is just an under painting of it. We're okay. going to put colors on top of it. So we just, we're just making a flat surface basically for the colors we're going to put on. Should it be thick so that it covers up the blue behind it or does not matter? Um, I'm just putting it on. Yeah. I mean, I don't want clumps, but it's yes, yeah, solid, definitely solid because I, it's like I'm creating a white canvas to paint on top of for my balloons. Okay. But don't worry about it being perfect. If it shows a little bit of blue, that's fine. You can see in this one, actually, it looks like sky behind it almost in some of those stripes <laughs> because she used the same color when she put the stripes in. Oh, yeah. But not the original painting, um, this is not actually the original. This is a copy of the original. And the very original one, it had a very complicated geometric design on it mm. and that was just really hard we taught that one and it was too hard for people so we we changed them up to be these lines and they seem to be easier but 
the good part is once we get the shape of balloons on there and the baskets, you can decorate your balloon any way you want. That's the fun part of the painting. You, you know, because you're both painting together, you could, you could make two totally different sets of balloons. Let me know when you have your white circles on there and filled in. Okay. These circles remind me of when Bob Ross paints, he says, oh, there's a balloon, now I need a friend. <laughs> My daughter Isabella wanted to be Bob Ross for Halloween. <laughs> They actually had Bob Ross costumes on Amazon, but we didn't yeah. get to it in time to order it. We've had people show up in those for Halloween here. <laughs> when I met my husband, he had hair like that. It was natural. I think <laughs> that's what I fell in love with first was his hair. That shows how old I am, right? <laughs> Okay, well, I think that's probably there's a point to Mine too. Nice, good. All right, so to put on the bottom, on this small, depending on how small, let me back up, depending on how the size difference you have, the distance is gonna make a difference. For this big balloon, I'm gonna put three fingers down. Let me just double check that measurement. Um, actually, I'm going to put two fingers down, but all the way at the end of my finger. And then I'm going to put a line just below it, just a little line. And that's going to give me an idea of where my, I'm going to stretch out the shape of the balloon to. Okay. This line is, you know, about an inch, a little longer. So that was two one two of the widest part of my fingers down. And so this one, I'm gonna do the widest part of one finger and just a little bit below it. I just want it to not come down as far because that balloon is farther away. That makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. And then from the ends of each, each end of this dash, I'm gonna come up and angle it onto the balloon. And then just make sure that the lines on both sides, you know, look basically the same. You don't want to have, in other words, you don't want to have con one connecting like that, right? You, you want them both coming out, connecting with the widest part of the balloon on that side and the widest part of the balloon on that side. So it's the widest part of the balloon connected to that edge of that dash. Okay, I didn't exactly do that, but I think it's okay. Yeah, I jumped it. I jumped it. Yeah. It looks more like a little bit like a light bulb. It does. They do look like light bulbs. If it looks like, if you have a porcupine and light bulbs, you are doing great. <laughs> And then I'm going to fill that in. And I'm using my baby brush just because it's easier, you know, with those small spaces. Good. So now we have two floating light bulbs. Right. And a porcupine. Mm -hmm. well, kind of looks like an alien. <laughs> I want to put a Sasquatch right. on my rock. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I cleaned my baby brush. And I'm going to pop it in the black paint. But here's the thing. With your smallest brush, 
pull a little bit of that black down on the edge of your plate and then twist your brush back and forth. And the reason for that is we want to make sure that it's thin, that, that we don't get a lot of paint on there, a clump, and we've kind of groomed our brush to have a finer point. Okay. So I need to have, make a finer line for what I'm about to do. So I'm gonna rest, hopefully this is all dry on yours, it's dry on mine. I'm gonna rest my hand on so I can steady it. And then about a finger's, the tip of my finger, the width of a tip of my finger down, I'm just gonna make a square right under that dash. It's gonna be smaller than that. Well, it's actually a rectangle. It's smaller than the bottom of my balloon is wide because it, it's just a little, little smaller. And it doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, if you just put uh, crisscross stripes through it, it'll look like a basket, which is kind of nice. And then from, from the ed edge of my balloon, I'm going to pull down a string. It's hopefully as thin as you can get that brush when you're grooming it. So one from each edge and one in the middle. Boom. Like that. Shoot. It's okay. <laughs> It's a little, I don't I maybe not have enough paint in there. I also yeah. drew a, a line across the bottom of the balloon so it has something to hang from. Just go slow, okay? Just go slow when you do it. And just remember every balloon is different and even their baskets are different. So some might be long baskets, some might you know, be a true rectangle. Um, this one, these, this one looks really long. Mm -hmm, I noticed that. And this one's wide. So you know, if you ever watch a balloon launch, every balloon is different, every basket's different, and that's okay. That'll just make it look more realistic. Just go slow and careful. And if, if this is hard, if you have a Sharpie, you can do it with a Sharpie instead. Mm. It was kind of funny, actually. I don't know if I'm supposed to say this on TV, but I mean on YouTube, but um, when I was at the Bob Ross studio, one of the instructors said that somebody had, and they don't know who, it could have been someone at a PBS station or whatever. <laughs> I think they put whiskers on one of the little animals with a Sharpie. <laughs> the instructor's like, see that? That's Sharpie. That's not supposed to be there. But uh, yeah, it's really cool. If you ever go down to Florida, you go to New Smyrna Beach, Florida. It's uh, between Daytona and Cocoa Beach. And Bob has a studio that's pretty similar to what I've got here. It's in a strip mall. It has his paintings all the way around the walls. And they teach classes there. Um, but it's really fun to know that that's where Bob painted and, and those are his, you know, his easel and his paintings. Yeah. It's a pretty cool place to visit. Uh, you know, we went to Florida about three years ago and Cocoa Beach was really neat. We liked that a lot. Yeah, isn't it great? They, I took, um, when I was down there, I, I had an extra day or two and I took some art classes in Cocoa Beach. And I have to tell you, I took a watercolor class and I never had learned watercolor before. It was not something that, it was outside of my comfort zone. And I couldn't believe the instructor. He said, you need to stick to oils. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought I would never tell my customers something like that. <laughs> so Cocoa Beach but, is where, is where um, I dream of Jeannie was found, the bottle was found on the oh, beach. Yeah, that's right. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. We're dating ourselves. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, not many people really can remember that show. <laughs> I I used um I don't I don't even know if you told us to do the lines, but I did okay. coming down and um one's way too thick and I don't know if there's any way to fix it. It might be too late. 
me show you. So what I would do is I would just let it dry for now. Just and let it dry. Because if you go in and you try to fix it when you're stressed and frustrated about it, you're likely to blur it, to smear it. Yeah. So I would just try to not bother. Now what you could do if you want to avoid anything wet, when we decorate our balloons, you could decorate them upside down, which okay. sounds ridiculous, but there's no reason not to, right? If you want to yep. avoid any wet spots, you can do yep. that. There's no rules. There's no rules. Now here's the thing, here's where you get to be creative. And you can decorate your balloons any way you want. So I'm gonna try to stick to this pattern because I know it's, it works pretty well. Um, but if you wanna just wing it from here on out, awesome. I think that's fantastic. That would be great. But it's your call. I'm gonna, um, I think I'm gonna, maybe, I, well, I think I'm gonna, I want to do this one first because it's farther away from me and I won't have to put my arm in it. Uh, okay. Okay. But I think I'm gonna make this one my yellow one. Nah, I just, I'm being lazy, I'll clean my brush. I picked up yellow accidentally, but I kind of like the idea of doing them upside down. It's kind of fun, just. But anyway, if you, if you want to avoid wet paint, you can paint it upside down, that's the whole point. Or you can paint okay. it right side up. It doesn't really matter. You know, just, I just want to make sure I don't put my hand in wet paint. Like in the ocean? Mine are, mine are very dry because I use very little paint at first. Um, so up here, so if you want to do this yellow one, the way that works is basically I just have a little bit of yellow paint on my flat medium brush. And I'm just going to come and make a curve down to the other side. Does it have to be exactly like that one? No, of course not. But then I can fill that part in with yellow. It doesn't matter what your curve looks like, as long as when you do the, the one below it, it matches exactly. So it could be a curvy curve, it could be a straight line, it doesn't really matter. That makes sense, right? I could try to fix it more like that one if I wanted. Then the nice thing about if you make a mistake, if you paint something you don't like, let it dry. Just let it dry and then go back over it with white paint and it's like white out. And, and what I mean by white out, since you guys are old enough to remember I Dream of Jeannie, remember that correction fluid? I think they called it white out back in the day when people actually typed. You guys got very quiet on me. Okay, sorry, you were muted. So I'm doing mine <laughs> upside down and I'm trying to figure out how to make, should I start from the bottom then of that balloon? Yes. Yeah. Sure, why not? Do this. You don't have to make them exactly like the original. I mean, from here, if you want to just do polka dots, you could do polka dots. You know, if you're really feeling bold and you know how to paint Batman, do that. You know, whatever, whatever you want. I'm going to take a black stripe and, and make that line, although this one doesn't have it. Because why not? Because I can. And then I can leave that white in there and I can make another one. But the key is, is that you just have fun with it. And don't worry about it being too perfect, okay? So I have some areas that I messed up a little bit. I can just 
Once I think it's dry enough, I can just paint, very carefully paint white on top of it. And the white is just like correction fluid. Oops, it's like I smeared my black, but I'll have to go ahead and fix that black a little bit. I'm, when I'm putting details on my balloons, I'm putting my pinky on the canvas and that steadies my hand. And then notice I'm outlining the balloon. I'm only putting the lines on the inside. I'm not outlining it. You can outline it if you want. It just looks more natural if you don't. Now, so on this one, I have yellow on the top and I have white stripe below it and, it and those that stripes outline but that's just because I'm being ornery and wanted to do something different than the original but you can do either and I will put I am going to put a red line underneath here but I, I really encourage you to to do the colors you like and do the design you like, but just whatever you do, just take it slow and easy. Just go slow. And steady your, your hand with your pinky on a dry spot, that really helps. If this were oil paints, we couldn't do that because we'd be smearing it. That's a great thing about acrylic. It dries really fast. So mine looks different than the other one, but I'm okay with it. Hopefully you are. And I kind of like having the pop of white instead of blue, but you could do either. So I'm leaving the white between the yellow and the, I, it's kind of pink stripe. Yes. And then is that if okay? You, is it okay if, um, I mean, do you think I should go around the outside of it? Like, I know you said not to, but then I would not go on the outside of the balloon. And the reason why is if you're looking at a real balloon in the sky, it's not going to have an outline around it. But you know, it's up to you. If you want an outline around it, you can. It's, it's your painting. Now here we had yellow on top and then there's a blue stripe and then there's red and then there's yellow, then there's blue, then there's red, then there's yellow. I made a really, I always make everything big. It's kind of my problem or my style, depending on how I want to look at it. I have a huge yellow section and then I decided to leave this white because it was in there and I was being lazy. But again, you know, you could do it exactly like these or you could put stripes. And then I'm doing red. So I'm not going to have room for all of these stripes. And that's going to be easier for me to not have room for all the stripes. So for me, I'm going to leave a space. And again, you do you. But I'm going to leave a space and put yellow. Now I did, I did already put a black line next to the red because I just kind of like the contrast. But I, I can't say it enough. I want you to be creative here. You can do it just like mine if you want, but I really encourage you, you know, have fun with it. Because the worst that can happen is we hate it, right? 
and then we let it then we let it dry and then we paint it white let that dry and we do it again and sometimes at the studio here there have been times when we didn't have enough canvases handy and we wanted to paint something else we just painted it white and then painted the whole painting over it a new painting right on top of a white canvas that we just painted over so. you know the medieval masters did that a lot yep exactly and now they did, they did it with oils and it took months to dry yeah and we're discovering that now because of x-ray technology and stuff did you see that thing about um the mona lisa about all the layers that were underneath the Mona Lisa? Yes, I did. Wasn't I saw something cool? about that. It was amazing. They were talking about some of the layers look like maybe his students and, oh, wow. and some look like corrections that he made to the students' um, paintings. Oh, wow. Huh. Yeah, that's one of the coolest things that was on PBS that I saw. It was about how Da Vinci, not sorry, not Da Vinci, Van Gogh, remember that he was crazy, that he lost his cognitive abilities. But one of the things they said is that they, they analyzed the colors and the movement of the strokes in his painting, and it actually mimics some, I can't remember, some physics theory. And they said it's possible that he might have actually had the ability to see energy move. Isn't that the weirdest thing? Wow, that is interesting. Very interesting. Like it, his, his shapes and, his, and the movement of his strokes mimicked wave particles. That was it. And they're like, it, it really could have been that part of his you know, what we think of as a disability really could have been a very special ability. Yeah, it could have been his cognitive perception of what he was able to see. So my balloon looks totally different than that one, but you know, that's just, and mine's not perfect, um, like it's bumpy, but you know, you can tweak these all day. And like I said, if you don't like it, you can always go back when it's dry, paint over it white, paint it again. You can paint over it 50 times if you want, but I'm just gonna not be a perfectionist too much and I'm gonna just embrace my imperfections. I wish I would have learned that a long time ago in life. <laughs> I'm less stressed. Yeah. Especially as a parent. And I can turn it upside down and you know, if I wanna fix something and not draw my hand through, paint. I can always fix it that way. I can try it sideways too. Whatever is the easiest way to get at whatever you're doing. But just go slow and carefully. That's, that's my tip. So we used to have these very complicated geometric designs on the balloons and it looked cool, but it was hard to get it to wrap around and get the perspective right. Oh yeah, I know. See, we just came out of, from a balloon ride, like I told you, and it would oh, been, it would so been one like that. But it's got a very wow. complicated geometric design of repeating diamond patterns, and that would be very difficult for us. Beginners wow. to do. It was really ni nice. It was up in the Fraser Valley. And they oh, make you go so cool. early, early in the morning because that's when the atmosphere is the most stable. And so oh, they wow. lift off at six in, six in the morning. But it's so serene oh, and so uh, peaceful. It's amazing. Did you, so you went up with a guide, right? Yeah, we did. So um, they have this special um, partition system that's built by the balloon manufacturer. And uh, it has like plastic partitions to divide up the balloon. This is a very big balloon. It was 
200 feet tall. Wow. Or was it a, no, 100 feet tall, I think. And the basket could hold 12 people, but they have it set up for um, about 10 people with the partitions in it. And they take your temperature when you go in and um, you're in your own little cell, so to speak, in the in the room. Oh yeah, because of social distancing. Oh, that's funny, since you can't social distance in a basket. Yeah, yeah, but the manufacturer made this system that has um, uh, plastic partitions in it. It's really oh. cool. So I can show you um, what I meant by whatever design you decide to put in your other balloon. Um, uh, let's see, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna paint something in gray and hopefully you can see it and then I can paint over it. But what, what people sometimes do is, you know, they'll say, oh, I wanna make stripes, right? And so they'll start to put on these stripes and then they'll go like this and it doesn't make any sense, right? And so if you do decide to put on stripes or something that's more geometrical, you have to consider perspective. And what I mean by that is that the stripes have to get smaller as they go to the side. Oh, right, right. Mm -hmm. um, that's right. a mistake a lot of people make. So I could just do that and see what I think. but. As I, as I get out to the side, each one has to be smaller and thinner. Actually, no, that's not even right. See, I'm messing it up already. It has to touch in the middle, is what I'm trying to say. So anyway, like I said, it's hard to, to do stuff like that. And so I just don't, I just try to avoid it. Um, yeah, because even I was trying to explain it and I messed it up. So <laughs> it's, if you, if you have a geometric design in mind, I don't want to discourage you from doing it, but just know you have to think it out and it might be a little trial and error. It's easier to do something like making a solid blue balloon with red dots or, you know, whatever, um, than trying to go for a geometrical design. Yeah, freehand is very tough. Um, and you can't use a ruler or straight edge or something that makes it tough. So one thing I noticed in my painting, I don't have any green, but I do have all the colors for it. So if I wanted, I could, I could put in a green balloon and then figure out how I wanted to decorate it after I paint it solid green. I was um, trying to make green too. So green is just blue and yellow mixed together. Probably with more yellow. But it just depends on the color green that you want. Blue tends to be a more powerful color and you don't need as much of it as yellow in general. But it just depends on the shade that you're going for. And you don't have to do green. Like I said, you do you, you know, do something fun. You, if you can't be creative and try something new and different and risky here, then where can you, right? That's right. So that green has more blue in it than the first time. But I'm gonna layer, uh, whatever you decide to do with your balloon, if you do, are doing a solid color, you can put on paint, you know, just to get the bulk of it on. But then when you do the sides and really touch it up, I would recommend doing it with your small brush to do the detail.
and I'm resting and being really careful to rest my hand in only dry places. And I'll go really slowly. These are the easiest easels I could get on Amazon in short notice. They had they had one day ship. <laughs> We thought about selling easels here, but it would have made the kit so much ex more expensive. And we want to keep the kits really inexpensive for people. Yeah, right. No, I'm, I'm really glad that you sell the kits like that. It just makes it easy. You don't have the stuff at home and then you got to go and try and find it or follow yeah, it. Most people don't have, have it at home. And, and we also want it to be so like if you, you know, buy four kids and you go out with your family, you can do it on a picnic table at the park and, you know, not have to take half your house with you. Yeah. <laughs> So I just made that one green. I don't know why. I was just feeling green. I love green. It's a beautiful color. Any suggestions on what to do to it to dress it up or should we leave it looking like a watermelon? <laughs> oh, that is look good. That does look like a watermelon. That's, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Speaking of watermelons and balloons, uh -huh. have you been to the Albuquerque Balloon Festival? I have not, and I have always wanted to. Yeah, I have not either, but we did go one year, um, a, not at the Balloon Festival, but right? we stayed at the Sandia Resort right, right there in Albuquerque. And it's called Sandia because in Spanish that's watermelon. Oh, and that's so this mountain that's the backdrop of this resort uh, looks like a watermelon. Huh. That's actually the reason I started painting. It was kind of funny. We went to, um, my husband and I were in Santa Fe and he, I said, oh, I want to retire down here someday. And he jokingly said, who's going to learn to paint, you or me? <laughs> and, uh, All right. <laughs> I'll consider that a challenge. When I came home, took a painting class, and that was it. I was hooked. You're, you've done well. Yeah, I mean, you know, we do okay here. It's you can't raise a family on this, but um, I, I don't need to. My kids are, yeah. and um, I just don't need to. He he's working, so so I don't need to raise a family on it. Thank goodness. Well, that's you know very oh. considering the times and. Uh, I just accidentally made a face in my rock, a cartoon <laughs> face. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. Anthropomorphism. It's very, very um, common on rocks and plants and stuff. Oh, yeah. What do you do for a living? Do you mind if I ask? Oh, me? I'm a, I'm a civil engineer construction manager. I work for CU. Oh, I work cool. for the uh, Anschutz Medical Campus in the CU D Denver. Do you teach? No, I manage construction projects, like building oh. projects. The reason I asked is my, my middle son is an engineer. Um, and he got it in uh, sustainable engineering. He didn't end up getting, you know, there are no jobs in that really. Um, yeah. When the oil companies aren't hiring, that's pretty much the only ones who were interested. But um, so he's doing a lot of civil engineering just cause, you know, he went back and learned some things and uh, he went to see you. Oh, okay. So he 
might know Fred Andreas. Might have been one of his instructors. I'll have to ask him. So uh, one good field for people with that type of focus is um, sustainable building um, certifications. So there's LEED, L-E-E-D. And he has been, oh, I think so he's been LEED certified actually. Yeah. So that's a, so that's a certification, a right? Pardon me? A certification? Yes, you need to have a certification and um, you need to have continuing credits to keep that certification active. I think, I think he has been or he was working on it, but I've heard him talk about it a bunch. Yeah, they have, there's a lot of companies, consulting companies that do consulting for construction companies and for owners of buildings that uh, help them achieve different levels of sustainability under the LEED program. And so they're the ones that tell them, you know, if you do this with your water systems, you'll get this many points. Or if you do this with your um, parking and your exterior and your landscaping, then you'll get gain this many points. Right. And so, you know, the, I don't with know the how much of that he's doing now, actually. Sorry to interrupt. I'm just saying that that's uh, that is a very luc lucrative um, consulting niche. I'm going to ask him about that. You know, it, I I'm embarrassed to say my husband has a P. Well, I'm not embarrassed about this part. My husband has a PhD in engineering, and when they start talking engineering, I leave the room. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right. I don't. Yeah. I don't have anything to contribute to it. So. I'm just playing around with my rock. Uh, so any thoughts on what we can do to that green watermelon in the sky? Because I can't imagine it would float as a watermelon. <laughs> we could it green. I mean, whatever you want to do. I like it. You like it green? I do. I like it the way it is. Nice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to step back about 10 feet from my painting. And I know you're in a place where... You probably can't step back 10 feet, but even if you can go four or five feet and take a look at it, you can see what needs to be tweaked, or maybe you'll see that it's perfect and you want to just sign it and be done. I'm trying to do polka dots on my little balloon. I don't know if that's working out so well. It's hard to do when your paint is wet. It's probably a good idea if you're gonna do something like polka dots to just let it dry first. Because when you paint wet on wet with acrylic, it actually removes the paint from the layer underneath. Oh. So what, if I wanna add more splash in there, I just put white on my baby brush and then I can just zigzag, kind of scribble it on back and forth next to the rock. And I'm not making like a hook. I'm not making a candy cane shape. Because far away, it you can't really see those waves and splashes. It just looks like white from far away. The mistake, I'm gonna show you what I mean. The mistake that people make a lot when they're painting is when they do an ocean like this, or a, yeah, it's an ocean probably, or a lake, they, they want to make waves like this. Do you see that? <laughs> yeah, so, I know what you mean. Yeah, so that's just what we want to avoid in general when we're painting. We, we want to keep things mostly flat. If you were on a boat in the Caribbean and you looked out, you would see that the water from a distance looks flat. Even it could be raging. You could go out there on a whale or you know, uh, trip, and and it's right next to the boat, it's raging, bumpy waves, but from a distance, it always looks flat. Yes. But what says that it's moving water is that it's white, because the, the sun reflects on the water and makes it brighter. By putting the white there, it just creates the splash 
And I didn't do the, you know, the caricature-ish waves to do it. And you can also, if you want to make that rock look like it's got a definite edge to it, you can go in your black and, you know, kind of make that edge a little darker and more jagged. And just, you know, I think in the original, it, it just had some darkness in the rock that really looked a little more foreboding and definite. But the, my rock was huge, so I don't want to keep messing, making it bigger. But you can make your rock edgier or darker, or whatever you want to do to your rock. Or leave it alone, whatever you want to do. The rock's kind of fun to just play with. Yeah, mine resembles uh, sedimentary patterns. Nice, nice. We painted red rocks here the other day, and that was really hard for me to describe for people. Yeah. Yeah, especially cool. if you haven't been there. Well, I think you could kind of picture it in their heads, but then I was telling them it's kind of like a stack of books, and each era is represented by a different book. Um, but it, they weren't getting it. <laughs> eventually, they, eventually they did, but it, but it took a lot of different metaphors to, to get it across. Yeah. Well, that's what makes a good teacher. If you can explain things in multiple different ways, more people can gain an understanding. Thank you. I appreciate that. I do want to show you one more thing on our watermelon here. Um, this will forever be known as the water balloon painting. One thing that you can do to get it to look more round is this, this watermelon balloon is made of blue and green mixed together. Sorry, blue and yellow mixed together to make green, right? So if uh -huh. I want to make it more three-dimensional, I can take yellow on my baby brush and I can, my paint is still a little wet. So I can start with a circle and I can just right in the center of that round part and I can circle out. And as I circle out, I'm gonna be losing that yellow paint off my brush and it's gonna to start to blend with the color outside of it a little bit more. And in theory, if I keep doing this all the way out, just slowly, slowly, it should make that balloon look a little more three dimensional because the center part will be highlighted with a lighter color, in theory. Mm -hmm. I see. No, I, I could definitely tell a difference. And you can, you know, do it as many times as you need. But when you're paint, when I'm like, if I were to paint a vase that were that was round, or a dish or a bowl, I would put the lightest part in the center of a round object, and then I would get darker as I went to the edges. It's kind of a slow process. And just anytime you do detail work, just, just go slow. So are you Denver natives? Uh, I'm Colorado native. My family is from um, Southern Colorado, Florence. Nice. Before I, don't know, every... I don't know where Florence is. Is that near Pueblo? It is. Oh. Yeah. And, you know, prior to the Supermax being built, uh, very, very few people knew anything about Florence. But that's where the Supermax prison is. Okay, I heard of it. I just, yeah, I didn't, didn't know. I haven't been down to Southern Colorado in a really long time. I went, have you ever been to the alligator farm? I think that's in Alamosa. Alamosa, yes. We, we've been there. Uh, I took my kids there like three, four years ago. Oh, fun. It was, it was a lot of fun. 
We had the most fun and unique vacation down there many years ago. I think it was 2006, maybe. And it was the most unusual vacation because we went to the Al Alamosa alligator farm and I my kids were little then. And so I had three boys and going to an alligator farm unexpectedly was just the highlight of their lives. Oh and yeah. When they saw my kids coming, I guess the alligators get out a lot, which I think oh. is crazy, but they escape. And so they asked my kids, do you want to help us catch this alligator? And so they're running down this dirt road trying to catch an alligator. And then, you know, one of the guys that worked there wrestled it and then puts masking tape, not masking tape, um, duct tape around its mouth and said, you want to sit on it? And man, my kids, I don't think they'll ever forget that as long as they live. That was like the most bizarre and fun vacation. And then we went back to the hotel and I know it was 2006 because this happened. There just happened to be this great big campaign bus. And Ken Salazar was there with his entire family. Oh, wow. And so we spent the day hanging out with Ken Salazar and his mother and his brothers and sisters and half the people in the town. And my kids loved Ken Salazar. And we have all these pictures with him. And um, uh, we just had a blast. It was just the craziest. Wow. Like, I couldn't have planned a vacation like that. It just happened. <laughs> wow, those are the best. Um, yeah. did, you, did you go to the sand dunes while you were there? Oh, yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah. It was a long was time the, ago. My kids are grown. Was that little Medano Creek flowing at the time? I, I don't think very much. I think it was, I think we went in the end of the summer. Oh, uh-huh. Yeah, either, anytime though, it's it's really cool there, just hiking up on those sand dunes. It's so hard to walk up those sand dunes, harder than you would think. That's the funny thing about Southern California and Northern New Mexico. You know, you think, you go in the summer and it's so hot, and you kind of think about, oh, well, that's a hot part of the state and a hot part of the country. And then one time I was going to go in May, and I, so... I thought, oh, last time I was there, it was so hot. I'm going to bring hippie skirts and sandals and short sleeve, you know, shirts. Uh -huh. Went down there for a weekend. I think I was just going on the other side of the Raton Pass, I think. But anyway, it was the end of May, and there was a blizzard and three feet of snow. Oh, my gosh. And all I had was sandals and hippie skirts. Oh, and my <laughs> and sleeveless shirts and i had to walk to a walmart on i-25 with plastic bags on my legs to go buy clothes i'll never forget it <laughs> oh, oh my <laughs> yeah you never know especially if they always say that in colorado weather could change at any time and it's it's so true yeah i spent i think we I, it was just me i was going like down there to with some girlfriends to like a bed and breakfast or something just for a kind of a mom's weekend. And um, boy, I'll just never forget walking, you know, wearing summer clothes in a plastic bag, walking to Walmart yeah. and freaking the snow. Wow, that's nuts. <laughs> anyway, this is the end of the painting. So it's really been fun painting with you. I hope you had a good time. And, you know, now that you, ha you have your paints, if you, you know, anything dries, and you want to go back and tweak it, you know, you, you got them. And I'm just going to sign my painting, I'm going to pick one of the bottom corners, and I'm just going to sign my name anywhere in one of the bottom corners somewhere. Bob Ross always does his in red. You can do yours in whatever color you want. Um, I don't know why I said Bob Ross, but we're kind of big fans of him around here. Yeah. So, um, but just put oh. your little initials or your name and with your baby brush in one of the corners. And then when it's in the Louvre, I'll know it was you. I'll see that. <laughs> well, maybe not in this lifetime, but. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. You never know. Yeah. Well, you know, it's been a real pleasure. Thank you so much. You made it very enjoyable. And um, like so I said, I'd I really like, to do, like to do mm -hmm. a session with my kids. And then uh, we'd definitely love to come in and do an in-person session.
when things are back to somewhat normal. Perfect. I love that too. All right. Okay. Well, have a wonderful night. It was nice to, I'm going to, it was nice to meet both of you on, on this and to meet you in person, Mr. B. Hill. And um, I look forward to seeing you in person at the studio sometime. Okay, that sounds great. Well, thank you, Nancy. Thank you. Have a great night. Okay. Thank you. You two enjoy your uh, enjoy your quiet time alone together. I, I think that's wonderful. Thank you. All, All right. right. Take, Take care. care. Good luck to your next session. Thanks. Bye bye. bye, -bye.